the City of Milton Common Council meeting to order Tuesday, May 2nd, 2017 at 7 p.m. And can I get confirmation of appropriate meeting notice? The meeting was noticed here at City Hall, Piggly Wiggly, and Dave's Ace Hardware. And is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make the motion to approve the agenda with the change that since this is Elena's last meeting that we do a team building exercise. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Mark, can they even do this? Can you take control of <laughs> it? It's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Okay. <laughs> so we're changing the rules? Okay. There's a motion and a second. I'm not sure it's in order, but all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, the agenda approved. Item number three, public comments regarding items which can be affected by council action. Any public comments? No one registered. Okay, item, I, and I'm moving to item number four then. Um, approval of the Common Council minutes for April 18th of 2017. Approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Discussion of possible action regarding MAC Community Development Authority appointments. Uh, per the ordinance that was uh, revised and adopted by the City Council last September, uh, the Community Development Authority would now have two members as uh, designated as MAC members and appointed by the, the MAC board. Uh, they brought forth those names for council consideration this evening. Danny Stiverius, their executive director, and Jason Cowley, owner of uh, Piggly Wiggly here in Milton, would be the two MAC representatives on the Community Development Authority. I'll make a motion that we approve <clears throat> the committee appointments. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further questions or comment discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Discussion of possible action on TIF number six development agreement with the Milton Historical Society. Uh, this is an item that's been on the council's uh, radar for a number of months now, uh, as approved uh, last fall in concept, and then again uh, earlier this spring as part of the public improvement, the 2017 public improvements program, uh, the city of Milton would be partnering with the Milton Historic Society to pave, I, should, I, I don't want to say repave, I, we would actually going to pave uh, the parking lot next to the Milton House. An arrangement has been worked out amongst the two parties. Uh, we received bids that were accepted by the city council uh, back in February. Uh, the bid for this parking lot facility construction was $44,405. Uh, the Milton Historic Society would contribute 6000 and the City of Milton would contribute the balance of that uh, project through TIF-6 funds. The TIF development agreement, which is required by state statutes for the utilization of TIF funds, would be required for the Council to adopt uh, that agreement. The Milton Historical Society has uh, seen the document, is in favor of it. And, uh, so the last step in the process would be for the City Council to approve the uh, TIF development agreement between the two parties. Uh, with construction tentatively slated to begin the Monday after Civil War days. That's all I have. <clears throat> I make a motion that we approve the TIF 6 development agreement between the City of Milton and the Milton Historical Society. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further questions, comments, discussion? Larry? I have a question. Um, they will repay this portion no. they will not repay. No, this is the uh, question came up by some uh, right. citizens this would be know. treated as, uh, as a grant okay. uh, per se for for the Milton Historic Society in order to get this improvement done. Okay. That's what I yep. that was the answer I gave. Sure. So, thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Congratulations. Discussion of possible action on change of premises for Timber Hill Winery located at 1223 Stores Lake Road, number one, to extend the premises to include an outdoor patio area. Uh, the folks at Timber Hill Winery are looking to uh, construct an outdoor patio facility in the, in the front of their building. Uh, they had their site plan 
reviewed earlier this evening by the Planning Commission, which was approved. Uh, but in order to fully effectuate their change, they would need to uh, request a change of premise to allow for the consumption and the serving of alcohol on this new outdoor patio. The outdoor patio is approximately 600 square feet and would, have, uh, would seat about 20 individuals at max. Um, <clears throat> the, the change of premise would, would again allow for alcohol to be consumed uh, and served out on this patio. It's the intent uh, that folks would uh, order inside uh, the facility and then uh, a waiter, a waitress, someone, a member of the staff of Timber Hill would then uh, bring that out to them if they were out on the patio. Um, <clears throat> so in order to make this uh, uh, the site plan enacted as it was approved by the Planning Commission, this would be the final step in that process. Uh, it also, in order to, to make this happen, um, uh, the Planning Commission approved the site plan which would expand their parking to accommodate the new area uh, that would be used by patrons. Uh, so they would need to add about seven stalls, which they have agreed to do, and they provided that site plan uh, to the plan commission earlier this evening. I'll make a motion that we approve the change of premise for Timber Hill Winery. Second. There's a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Is there any further discussion or comment? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations. Okay. Discussion and possible action on the acquisition of 19.4 acres of land along County Trunk Highway M from the Bellardi Family Investments, LLC. This item was on uh, <clears throat> the previous council agenda, but unfortunately at that time we didn't have a, a signed copy of the offer to purchase. Uh, from the Bellardi Family Trust, we now do. Uh, so this would uh, effectuate the sale of that process, which, or of that parcel of land, which was previously approved by the council. Uh, closing date for the for the acquisition is yet to be set, uh, but would probably commence sometime in May. Uh, this is again just for folks, a reminder. This is the 19.4 acres of land that is located on the south east corner of County Trunk Highway M and State Highway 59. Uh, it's already annexed into the city and zoned for industrial development. Uh, <clears throat> once we made this announcement that we would be interested in purchasing this land, we've had some interest expressed in the property, uh, but don't have a, uh, uh, a user uh, identified yet. Uh, but it is our intent to uh, move forward with the acquisition regardless. And very possible that we would be extending infrastructure across this land, uh, maybe as early as 2017, uh, to support that development. This is just wrapping up what we've already decided. Really. Yeah, this is the this is the actual offer to purchase, which was signed by the Velarde Family Trust, um, and has already been signed signed by me, but requires council approval in order to uh, um, to finalize that that sale of land or purchase of land, I should say. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve the land, uh, the acquisition of nineteen point four acres of land along County Trunk M from the Bellardi Family Investments, LLC. I'll second that. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further questions or discussion or comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. <laughs> discussion and possible action on resolution 2017-10 support of Assembly Bill 229 relating to investment of surplus money for local units of government. This will be part of uh, Dan Nelson's uh, platform when he runs for governor of the state of Wisconsin shortly. Uh, Dan Dan uh, has, has brought this to our attention and has had conversations with other finance directors from other communities in the state of Wisconsin mm -hmm. that are interested in this. And, and oddly enough, Dan and I just discussed this very concept uh, probably two weeks ago and uh, and then became aware that this assembly bill was moving through the assembly and I'll, I'll turn it over to Dan to give greater details of it but uh, something that we are definitely interested in definitely in support of uh, this bill so we thought it'd be nice to bring it forward to the council uh, for their blessing as well yeah currently state statutes only allow municipalities to invest in like CDs and stuff like that for a period of no greater than three years and for a myriad of reasons, we believe that that should be 
in the hand that should be up to the local communities and officials to decide what what makes sense in terms of um, length of investments and this assembly bill strikes that language from the statutes so there won't be a a set period of, a maximum period of time that investments could be made for and the league also supports this yeah the league of wisconsin municipalities also supports this bill and, and how this would apply to us here locally in the city of milton is uh you know the, the word surplus money is is somewhat superfluous in this situation but as everybody knows we have a fund balance we have uh, a fund balance that we use to protect the, the community's interests to protect our financial interests in the event of uh, uh, of some sort of uh, calamity or uh, you know I don't I don't like the term rainy day fund I don't I don't like that but it's, it's really a protection against uh, in the city's best interest in, in the event that there's some unforeseen circumstances that require us uh, a large expenditure that wasn't previously budgeted for so our fund balance is a healthy fund balance generally sits around that 20 percent uh, 20 to 25 percent so that's a substantial amount of dollars and what's frustrating to us at the local municipalities is being capped by uh, the state in the uh, in the amount of term in, in the term in which you can invest funds it really limits communities ability to maximize those dollars in the most effective and efficient way uh, because they really are taxpayers dollars uh, and when limited by the state uh, with this three-year cap uh, there are opportunities in which we could invest fun funds in a CD that would be longer than three years with a greater rate of return obviously most folks know that the longer you hold money within a CD the greater interest rate you get so what Dan has outlined for the city uh, of Milton is laddering of CDs, uh, which which allows you to have a great deal of liquidity on a year-to-year -year basis. Obviously, you wouldn't have uh, access, immediate access to all of your funds, but we hope that situation never comes where we would need our entire fund balance. If that is, we're all in trouble anyways. Uh, but in order to, to uh, you know, really maximize those dollars and really have the local control in what we see is best for our financial interest and for the taxpayers dollars of financial interest really setting up a five-year ladder in a in a certified deposit account is probably the most fiscally responsible and efficient and, and really a way to maximize your dollars so if this bill was to pass through the assembly and then through the senate and signed by the governor that is a system in which we would we would like to set up dan has already kind of started to implement that process on a three-year ladder but this would just create gain us greater latitude uh, and, and again, and efficiencies and effectiveness of those dollars being saved. So in effect, every year, once the five-year ladder is in place, every year we would have one-fifth of our dollars uh, that would become liquid again and, and available to us to either reinvest or to diversify in another way. But uh, you know, the rate of return on a five-year CD versus an 18-month CD or a three-year CD, um, you know, those are always variable. But right now, especially, uh, those interest rates are, are favorable and they'll continue to probably be favorable for the next couple of years uh, so we'd like to take advantage of this so we're thankful that other folks had the same uh, thoughts in mind as we did uh, it's always good when other people agree with your opinions <laughs> and, and and obviously folks do uh, up in the state assembly as well because the bill was drafted and and we would like to show support of it in addition to that Dan will be up on uh, the mini Capitol Hill up in Madison tomorrow in order to testify in favor of this bill if the council is also in favor of it as well so that's a long long explanation to something that seems rather simple but it's important to us and it originated the folks in Stevens Point are the ones that actually got this bill going and what um, what really got it going for them is there was a state highway that they were the, the state was going to turn over to local control and was in fairly bad shape and so they gave the city of Stevens Point six million dollars um, recognizing the fact that they're going to have to put money into it and they and they concluded that it was going to be four to five years before they were going to do anything with that six million dollars and because of the limitations they're only only able to invest for three years and it cost them seventy-five thousand dollars in interest on that six million bucks, and so that was seventy-five thousand more that they're going to have to either borrow for or levy for, or some combination of that. So, and it seems to make a lot of sense, and it would be nice for Dan to be able to have a past resolution to take with him when he testifies tomorrow.
Is there a motion? Sure. Uh, I recommend that we approve resolution 2017-10 in support of Assembly Bill 229 relating to the investment of surplus money by local units of government. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further comment or questions or anything? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Discussion and possible action on resolution 2017-11 Opposing Senate Bill 158 relating to property owners' refusal allowing municipal assessors interior access to properties. This is uh, docket number two on future Governor Nelson's uh, agenda platform. Um, <clears throat> and with the yang, there is always a yang. In this situation, we are uh, we are looking to oppose the Senate bill. And and frankly, the, you know, item number nine that the council just approved is is something that generally that will. You know, dramatically benefit a community. Um, this piece of legislation is very dangerous and could very uh, could could very much harm municipalities. Right now, Senate Bill 158 um, would strike the language in state statutes that uh, basically prevent an individual who does not allow assessor into their home to challenge their assessment uh, at the time of open book. Um, this is problematic on a number of levels, and this is completely irrespective, and I say this with all sincerity, this is completely irrespective of the fact that we are looking to go through a revaluation. Um, this would be, even, even in a non-revaluation, even in a maintenance year, this would be uh, problematic for any assessor, and this is not a problem that will only inflict the city of Milton, but every municipality in the state of Wisconsin. If an individual does not allow assessor into their home, that is their right. They absolutely have that right. Uh, to, to not allow an assessor into their home. That's currently within state statutes, and we certainly wouldn't advocate that that language be taken out. What is problematic in this uh, bill is that if someone does not allow an assessor into their home, uh, under current state law, they're not allowed to challenge the assessment at open book um, at the time because they didn't allow that assessor into their home. So the assessor was never able to go into their home and to verify the condition of their property, as well as to see if any improvements were made in their home uh, that were either done illegally or, or to a greater degree than what was previously approved by the local government, governmental body. Additionally, this goes a step further um, in that an assessor who does not, is not able to enter their home is not allowed to even raise that individual's assessment uh, based, on, uh, based on assessment practices. So what this could do, and, and I, and, and, you know, th this is this is a little bit of a struggle for us. You know, we're very much opposed to this bill for the for the for the credibility uh, of our the assessment process, the the equity the assessment process provides. But if this bill passes, it's very likely. Why would anybody le ever let an assessor into their home? Um, and and you know, some folks might may say, based on an ideology, you know, that's the way it should be. But what that does is it presents a great deal of inequity in the assessment process. Um, not only does it create an inequity in the assessment process, it damages the overall credibility of the overall assessment roles. And if, if an assessor is not able to physically view the property and not allowed to increase that assessment, uh, folks who make improvements to their homes illegally or without proper permits are not then paying their fair share. So to use this in an example, if you had an unfinished basement and then you added a bedroom and a bathroom and a, and a bar and a rec room down there uh, and the assessor was not allowed to enter your home to, to find out that those improvements were made, first off, they were done illegally without any kind of inspection or building permits. So there's a public safety measure here. How do we know that the plumbing was done correctly? How do we know that the electrical was done correctly? But two, that individual has increased the value of their home without paying their proportionate share of taxes related to that increased value of their home. So it creates a great deal of inequity. So those folks who then follow the rules are subsequently punished, in essence. They, the, those people who are trying to do the right thing and say, yes, we're going to take out building permits, and yes, we're going to allow the assessor into their home, will then have see their assessments raise, rise because they're doing the right thing, while those folks who don't follow the rules will, in essence, be rewarded by that, by not seeing their assessments increase. Then at the time that they go to sell their home, those folks who, who did uh, those improvements illegally or didn't follow follow the rules, the next homeowner then ha is is faced with this this 
kind of conundrum of, well, I bought this home that has an assessed value that is artificially low. They have an artificially high asking price, or maybe a reasonably high asking price based on the improvements in their home, but their assessment is artificially low. When the sale comes, it's very likely that that home will be reassessed, and it'll be reassessed at a much higher rate. So it puts people in this very difficult position where the equity is now kind of it is now disproportionately spread across uh, the homeowners. There's a public safety issue that could be in play here if improvements are being made without proper uh, inspections and proper permitting. And then when the home goes to sale, the next property owner is potentially saddled with a burden that they weren't even aware of. Uh, and that is that improvements were made in their home without proper permits and that the value of their house has been artificially deflated over time without the ability of the assessor to enter that home and see that home and, and, and recognize that those improvements have been made. And again, there might be an ideological argument for this. I don't know what that is and I don't know how somebody could justify that, uh, but it comes down to equity and it comes down to the credibility and the fairness of the assessment process. And those folks who are doing the right thing and making those improvements to their homes and, and making sure proper inspections are done and allowing the assessor into their home to see that are paying, paying their fair share, whereas others would not be. And there would be no, there would really be no reason at this point for anybody to ever allow assessor into their home again. And that's the fear that we have. Obviously that's a you know, rather hyperbolic example of that situation, but it, it, it could very well be the case. So the opposition to Senate Bill 158 uh, is something that we're very interested in in the city of Milton but I believe all communities should be interested in. Um, <clears throat> I would love to hear the testimony on this as to what the purpose of this bill is and, and what the problem or the perception of the problem is that's trying to be solved. Uh, but that is, uh, that's how these things work. That's how a bill becomes a law. <laughs> and in this case, we're hoping it doesn't. <laughs> and Dan, are you testifying in this one too? Yeah. Oh boy. And so I think it's important because- and So is Paul. Yeah. yeah, the, you know, we have access to this information about what bills are being proposed in Madison. Um, you know, we get legislative updates. And the average citizen in the city of Milton is not getting sent these updates and isn't aware or doesn't um, have time to do their own individual research. Or maybe if they do, they, it, it's difficult to understand exactly what the, the impact is. So I think it's really important when we have an opportunity to protect our citizens and to um, let our voices be heard and their voices be heard um, on behalf of, that we take this opportunity, especially in these situations where we can be doing a lot of good by investing wisely and, and here to protect everybody. So everybody's treated equal. I mean, I think everybody can agree that our citizens deserve to be treated equally and this is a bill that would, um, would not promote that and it would be harmful. So um, I'm in favor of um, registering, registering our opposition to this. For, uh, for our friends in the, in the media, the, the, this would be something that we would be opposed to even if we weren't planning on doing a revaluation for 10 years. This, this is something that um, we're opposed to just on the, the, the basic principle of the, uh, the Senate bill that's on place. It comes down to equity and fairness and, and the protection of the citizens. So I, I, I know that uh, you know the, re the timing of this is bad in the sense that we're going through a revaluation and here there's a Senate bill coming through that says, hey, the city's going through a revaluation, don't let them into your house. Uh, we would be opposed to this even if we weren't doing a revaluation. And I'm certainly not encouraging anybody to not let the assessor into their home. Uh, you have the right and this, that right still exists today, even without this law. You absolutely have that right. Uh, but this would really um, change the dynamics of that so much that it would be very difficult for every, anybody to ever have faith in the assessment process again. That sounded awfully dire, but it's kind of <laughs> It's true. I think, it'd be, I think the effects of it would be felt five, ten years from now, especially. The further, the further we you know, if this were to pass, the further away we get from 2017, we'd probably see that that gap ever widen as we get further and further away from what was deemed an equitable assessment role. And that and that's the fear. If if the and once again, like Al said, we don't really know what the problem is. 
because we can't figure it out ourselves. But if but if they're trying to fix the property tax, the heavy reliance that Wisconsin does have on property tax, this isn't the way to do it. You can't cherry pick bits and pieces of of a of a system. If you if the legislatures are really interested in trying to overhaul the system, they need to overhaul the system, not cherry pick bits and pieces of of something that's working. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to um, pass resolution 217.11. Is there any further comment or questions? I did more, a little more research on this, and there were some situations where inspector assessors, if you will, went into a home. And I want to ask the chief about this, but went into a home and then noticed that there was violations. We won't go into what the violations were, but laws being broken by these individuals in the home. Chief, if that happens, can an assessor contact you and say, I was in the home doing an assessment. I saw marijuana plants growing in the basement. Yeah, that's absolutely something that can be reported to us. We okay. would evaluate that information. The assessor, um, I mean, the assessor is in the home legally, yeah, under the auspices of doing the assessment. Of course. They then can, um, that the information that they then provide could be the basis for a search warrant. Okay, and yeah. we'd have to evaluate what the information is before we proceed. Um, but that's yeah, that's well, certainly something that could happen. So I'm I'm just bringing that up as maybe part of what's going on too is the fear people have of of quote government unquote entities entering their home. I'm not sure that's the only reason, but like you they said, they shouldn't be having illegal activity at their I, home. I agree, I agree, but I'm you know, stranger things come out of Madison sometimes. So and and that's a you know the the scenario you present isn't just. In, in assessments, that's fairly common in general, you know, where whether it's a repair person or a landlord or a disgruntled ex or for whatever reason a person is in somebody's home and sees something illegal, they can then tell us and we have legal steps we can take. Any other comments or questions? Well, I just, you know, I, I know that there's might be people out there that don't understand why we need to pass this but the bottom line is that it's our property taxes that supports our city you know that is our public safety that is our infrastructure and you know these these the assessments have a very important purpose and people need to realize that right and we want them to be fair and equitable for everyone um, and this is a way to, um, you know, make sure that that continues to happen. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Um, discussion of possible action regarding the May 17, 2017 Fire Commission meeting. We have this on the agenda um, because uh, for those of you on the Fire Commission and on the, on the Council, you know that we have been working uh, tire, tirelessly on um, solving some of the challenges our joint fire department has and uh, the transition team that's been in place now for many many months has been working even harder and putting in lots of hours lots of thoughtful discussion and debate uh, to come up with some recommendations and there's some adjustments to the intergovernmental agreement uh, between the city of Milton and the town of Milton so there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be impacting both the city of Milton and the town of Milton on the fire commission agenda for the next meeting. And we've discussed this with the town of Milton and um, we believe that it would be in everybody's best interest to have a joint city council meeting and um, town of Milton meeting um, take place, 
I guess simultaneously we've done this before at the fire commission meeting. Does anybody have anything to add to that? No, one of the reasons that we also threw it on here is because of the fiscal impact of some of those decisions. So that way everyone can hear the pros and cons to some of the various things that might be discussed, whether it's extending the contract for RW or staffing plans or things of that nature. And if you haven't received um, the recommendations, we'll send them to you. But also, if as council members, you have questions about those, because um, Jeff has um, stated that he would meet with individual fire commission members and answer any of their questions. But also, if any city council members have questions, they can contact Jeff um, and ask him those questions if you have uh, if you need a better understanding because there's some um, you know complicated recommendations and I think it's important that we all are very diligent and, and study these recommendations. Um, part of it is so you have an understanding of where everybody is coming from when you get to the meeting. So please um, contact him if you have any questions about those. I would appreciate being have those sent. Yeah, I know they're in the minutes, but I'd mm -hmm. like that. Just sure. You. So we can uh, get all that sent out. And do, do, do we need a motion or? I don't think we need a motion. Well, I, I guess you'd be looking for. I think a motion would be appropriate if the council wants to approve approve the scheduling of a special oh, sure. joint meeting with the uh, Milton, Milton Township Fire Department Commission and then the Milton Town Board, right? That's what you're looking Correct. at. So if, if that's it's supported by the council, it'd be appropriate to have a motion to direct that that occur. Sure. The, the only thing I would add is, um, you know, I think that this, this the, the idea of having this joint meeting is by no means to slow the process down. I think it's to allow the process to continue to move forward so everybody has a good understanding of it. Um, you know, I've had conversations with Jeff and I've had conversations with Chief Lucas and uh, with, with Mayor Welch and, and you know, I, things seem to be moving along rather well, but you know, from my perspective as, as the city administrator who doesn't have a vote on it, met, met, uh, these issues, I think it all looks good to me, but I, I would feel more comfortable everybody kind of understood what was happening and moving forward and everybody had a level of comfort with it so I see this as an opportunity to keep the ball rolling forward not by any means to, to slow things down or to tap the brakes I think this is a good idea and, and actually Mayor Welch and I were talking today about maybe this is a good idea to do this you know every four months or so um, irrespective of what's on the, the, the agenda it's just an opportunity to kind of keep everybody you know up to speed with it um, so th that was just kind of my thoughts on it I think it's a, a a unique opportunity, a good opportunity, and, and uh, you know, we'll take care uh, of noticing that on, on our end, and the town board will take care of noticing it on their end, and then there'll be a, a fire commission agenda as well. So, uh, we've done this before, and, you know, I think it's a good idea to continue this practice when possible and when it makes sense. And the meeting will be held here in, um, in May because the last one was at the town of Milton. Um, so that'll be good. It'll probably be a long meeting, so be prepared. Um, but again, I would just encourage you to please contact Jeff if you have any questions on, on any of the recommendations. So is there a motion then for this special meeting? I'll make a motion that we have the special meeting with the Milton Township with regard to the fire commission. And the fire commission, that'll be. And Dave seconded it. Is there any further questions or comments? I think that this is a really good idea just because we're making a we're because of the changes that we're making in the fire department it's very important for all of the city representatives to understand and to keep letting people know that we are keeping our Milton Milton Township fire department through this process because I know that there's people out there that are thinking that we're folding our department and that it's all going to be Janesville but that is not the case and I just feel like it's important for all of us to be able to relay that information when needed any other further questions or comments all those in favor 
I. All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. The next meeting um, is Tuesday, May 16th at 2000, 2017, uh, 7 p.m. And then again, we will be meeting <laughs> May 17th, 2017. Um, any general items? Go ahead, Dave. Congratulations, is there a party at your house? What time should we be there? Congratulations. Amazing, Dave. That's great. Right. Whenever you want. Any other general items? Okay. Uh, Ryan wanted to say something. What? <laughs> I want to mention the uh, Milton Civil War Days uh, Festival and actually bring Carrie into this as well, if possible. <laughs> First of all, I want to start off with having Carrie mention what our theme is tonight, or for the, this year. So, I'm bringing Carrie into this. Anisa. Nice job, Ryan. Carrie, thank you for being brought into this. You're really good at mentioning the theme. I wanted you to mention the theme. Well, um, we're very proud of the grant. Uh, we're very proud of this year's theme. Actually, we were able to do so thanks to a grant from the Wisconsin Humanities Council. Um, every year, the Civil War Days uh, has a theme that we try to get the, our guests to walk away with. It's more than just entertainment; it is a learning experience. Uh, this year, our focus is on abolitionism and more importantly, how the Civil War era is a turning point in American history. Uh, though the U.S. really became a world player in World War II, the Civil War is truly when America became America. How do the issues that were uh, resolved or not resolved during that era continue to impact uh, our nation today? How do they impact our identity? Uh, how do they impact uh, our heritage? our culture and really in the end of it, uh, how do we still continue to see race relations in the United States uh, from the Civil War era? We have reenactors, thanks to that grant from the Wisconsin Humanities Council that are going to allow us to portray the black American experience. And that is to say, if you've been a slave and now you are suddenly free, how do you view your role in the nation that previously had sanctioned your enslavement. And we're very excited because it is more of a conversation starter. It's a lesson that's still very relevant today. And it's one that we are just encouraging people to continue to consider. Um, yeah. Other activities that will be going on. Um, we're going to have reenactors that will be uh, drilling up at the College Green on Saturday. We'll have the Dates are the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, I believe. School days is the 19th. 19th sorry, 19th, 20th, and 20th. The um, open to the public is the 20th and 21st. Yeah. Um, the 20th, we hope you'll join us for the pancake breakfast, thanks to the Lions Club. Uh, there will be staged performances throughout the day, cannon firing, and there's also going to be a family-friendly concert in the park uh, starting at about 6 p.m. And then Sunday, we'll be capping the whole event off with a send-off of the troops, which will be a recreation of when soldiers went through off to war and the activities that happened as it went along, which basically, <clears throat> as soldiers went from Madison off to Washington, D.C., all along the way, they were greeted by the local um, populace, the, the people in the cities and the towns and everywhere, and basically thrown a party everywhere they stopped. Everybody was sending them off to go off and be heroes for the country. And so we're going to kind of recreate that a little bit on Sunday as well, because that happened for the first units that went off. And then as the war dragged on, that kind of party disappeared as things became a little darker during the Civil War. So we want to recreate the kind of the excitement of the early war and the sending off of the soldiers to go fight for the country. So. And this is also a free event mm -hmm. on, um, on Saturday and Sunday. And one of the things um, 
that I'm trying to assist with is promoting this event and Carrie and I and maybe some other people that have not been talked to about this will be going to uh, various other municipalities to personally invite them and, the and their families to attend this event. So it's not only just for the city of Milton, but this is for you know all of Rock County to come and participate in this. and. Um, remember our history and how important it is and that we never forget um, and maybe some of you saw that um, Milton was in one of the top 10 historical places in the state of Wisconsin and um, you know that's a big deal for us and I think we should continually promote um, how important our city is and our history is so um, we're looking forward to doing that so thanks and just to remind everybody it's free <laughs> As I said, it's a free event for the public, paid for by grants. The, main, uh, the biggest one being the Humanities Council, but also for our, uh, um, the Milton uh, Community Fund. There, there are certain portions, particularly we are doing a reenactment tour of the Milton House that does have a requested donation for you to come and see. Um, but we can't say enough thank yous to the Wisconsin Humanities Council and the Milton Fund. Um, as well as other sponsors, including Handy Art and North Leaf Winery, that make this weekend possible. Uh, we could not do it without their support, without the volunteerism, and without really the collaboration with the city. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was practice for what we got going next week. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other general items? Yes, I do. Um, and along with our history, the gathering place is looking for 90 volunteers for oral history projects with the high school juniors. Um, if you are interested in being one of those volunteers and talking with the students, the times are 8 in the morning, 10 in the morning, and 12:50, and it's all you need to do is just get a hold of the um, receptionist at the gathering place and they'll get you all set up um, and then I also just wanted to let everybody know that the chamber is celebrating small business week this week so I just want to encourage everybody to get out there and and embrace all of the small businesses that we have in the city when you start making a list of them we have quite a few and we have a lot that everybody can enjoy and there's videos yes, sir. there's videos <laughs> any other general items okay at your special request we will do team building um, and this is a new one we haven't I don't we haven't done a fill in the blank one before so here it is <laughs> try not to get too nervous okay if only it would stop raining, I would do blank. And you all can't say cut the grass. <laughs> if it only would stop raining, I would blank. Paint the fence. Oh, oh, bonus points. <laughs> bonus points. For you. This is the first time that Howie has ever voluntarily gone first. Yeah. <laughs> Mark. Do a hike. Do a hike. Dan. Go for a bike ride and get that lawn mowed. <laughs> Dave. Uh -huh. Larry? Um, finished repainting and repairing my buggy that I inherited last year. So. Teresa? Read the book. Oh, yeah. Al? I heard this morning that this is the eighth, this was the eighth wettest April on record. <laughs> and this was only the second time in the last decade that it had rained for nine straight days. So your question's rather apt. Uh, I have to absolutely mow the lawn. That's not even a question anymore. I'm going to get a letter from Howie if I don't do it. I'm pretty certain of it. Yeah. But once that's done, once that's done, I'll take Grant for a walk because he just, he 
He can't stand being inside. He just can't stand it. He's oh, oh, say, oh, all the time. Yeah. Um, I have been driving around with my bike in the back seat of my car, <laughs> wait, just like waiting, so I could use it at some point. So I'd like to take my bike out of the car, um, and at least cut the backyard. <laughs> I cut the front yard once, but the backyard is really, really bad. Uh, like Teresa, I am dying to just get out and read outside. Thanks, Ryan. Dry off my wet canvas in my tent. Got wet last weekend. And also uh, finish mowing and also take the kids to the park. Got a long list. Linda? Um, well... I would like to pull the rest of the grass out of my flower beds that I didn't get done last week. Um, but then I would also like to get out my bicycle. Chief? Dinner on the deck. Nice. And we'll be over. Inga? <laughs> Go to the zoo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody else want to volunteer? No hands up. So I mean, yeah, plant. Jeez, get those crops in already, will ya? <laughs> Carrie? Um, well, on. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? Okay. No? No? Seriously, Pedal. <laughs> we only have one farmer in the crowd. I, <laughs> we need some more farmers here. <laughs> Okay, committee reports. I have a committee report for the library committee. I just want to remind everyone that we had the library food truck rally May 7th from 10 till 2. Would like to invite everyone to come. And then I also just would like to let everybody know that our tourism committee completed the design for the tear-off maps and so they are in print should be very soon when we get those and I hope that everybody likes them I think we did a really nice job of getting a mix of all of the good things that we have going on in the city and I know that was a long process for all of you so I just want to thank you very much I know it, you know it took a little bit and we appreciate the time and effort and um, the collaboration that took place. Larry? Um, Parks and Rec, just to remind everybody that we're having our second uh, public input, I call it, uh, meeting on, on Storybook Gardens. And that's the 21st, Monday the 21st. Is it Monday the 21st of May? The, the 15th. The 15th, thank yep. you, I'm sorry. The third Monday of the month. The third Monday, my apologies, yeah. And we'd like people to come. Um, we're making progress, and uh, the more input we have, uh, the better the project will turn out, of course. So and where is that meeting going to be at? at? At the library, in the community room, second Perfect. floor. So I hope you can join us. Any other committee reports, Ryan? Public Works. <clears throat> uh, well, number two is the construction of the work is completed. The um, 2017 paving improvements project uh, is going to be starting here in May hopefully uh, let's see here also our I believe our engineers uh, engineers having fun uh, with the viewing stuff on the television I think of certain underground uh, pipes <laughs> and finally we're also going to be um, requesting easement from the property owners of um, Tommy bees for sidewalk installation so that was decided at our public works meeting today okay thank you any other committee reports <laughs> no. <laughs> I've already eaten supper. <laughs> Watching dirty movies again, paid for it. <laughs> Okay, staff reports. Inga, do you want to give some updates about what happened today? <laughs> just, just today? Yeah. Um, well, t well no. today we did do a posting for a police officer position. So if you know anyone that's interested in applying for that, 
send them to our website. And? Oh, Wally's Fest, um, Wally's Music Fest, which is happening June 2nd and 3rd in Milton, they received a GEM grant, which is a joint effort marketing grant, and that is just under $25,000 that they can use for advertising for the event. And today yes, I outside agreed, of Rock County. Today I agreed to sing the national anthem on Friday and Saturday, so there was only about $700 of that $25,000 left. <laughs> He's a tough country <laughs> negotiator. <laughs> Bonus if you hit it all on key, too. <laughs> Chief? I guess I'd like to do auditions then. <laughs> I'll throw my hat in for that. No nepotism going on here. <laughs> Um, as Inga mentioned, the, I, I want to explain the reason why we're advertising. It, it, the last time we ran a process, we had four people on our eligibility list. Corey Passer is currently working for us, doing a fantastic job, uh, making it through field training now. And we did a background investigation and had some questionable things pop up in that. I chose not to select that candidate. And the other two candidates just picked up full-time jobs elsewhere. So that exhausted my list. And so we're starting over. So. Um, off we go. So spread the word, and we're looking for some good people to come work for us here in Milton. And is it part time? Is that what you said? Full time. It's full time, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's, it's one position. Yeah, this one is to replace uh, Jim Martin's retirement. Okay. Uh, thanks to the generous um, assistance and funding by the fire department, we're now carrying Narcan in our squads. Um, rolled that out oh, within the last couple of weeks, I think, since the last meeting. Um, and so I'm pretty excited to get going with that program finally, and we'll see how that goes. I'll report out if we ever have any uses. Hopefully we don't, but um, we got it if we need it. Uh, I attended a meeting last week prior to the school board meeting. I uh, talked a little bit about the school's interagency safe schools team and kind of the work that we do jointly to prepare for events like we dealt with before spring break, um, answered some pretty basic questions about how the team works and the decision making. I think that went pretty well and we're continuing our after action conversations on what things need to be added to uh, their crisis plan and things like that as a result of the, all, um, our manhunt. Um, and also related to the schools, our SRO process, we got three candidates vying for the position. Uh, the interviews are a week from today and they'll be interviewing with a team at the school and then uh, meeting with me and we'll make our selection. That's all I got. Elena, anything you want to tell us? Um, it, well, liquor licensing has been going on and we've received all of the paperwork. Um, still to come though, uh, license renewals for cigarette and tobacco is coming up as well as for the operators. So. Um, that's all kind of been trickling in, and you'll see those coming on the agenda shortly. And what else? <laughs> um, and this will be my last Common Council meeting. <laughs> I guess I'm going to be announcing that. Um, so I, I guess I just really want to thank everyone. I've, I've had a really fantastic time, and I have learned so much working in the city of Milton with everyone, my coworkers, the council. Um, learned a lot and I really appreciate this opportunity um, and I will be moving on to the city of Sun Prairie which is my hometown um, and doing the city clerk position there. Congratulations and thank you for everything that you've done for us. We appreciate thank you. that. Thank you. Um, as, as kind of previously mentioned uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, went around and did some Facebook Live videos today to highlight some of our local small businesses in honor of Small Business Week. Uh, today we did The Gathering Place, we did Studio FX, and Goodrich Antiques. Uh, we've got two more on the docket tomorrow, I think four on Thursday, and then two on Friday. Um, so look for those on Facebook. It's been very well received so far, kind of fun. Uh, people are, are, I think, are getting into it. Danny and I are, are getting into our swing of it as we move through the process. but. It's been, uh, it's a cool idea, and, uh, and I think the chamber is doing a lot of cool and, 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 and interesting and exciting things to help promote not only the businesses that are chamber members, but also the city of Milton as a whole. So kudos to them for 
for uh, doing uh, those types of activities. Uh, also, as mentioned, in addition to Dan being uh, up in uh, at the Capitol tomorrow, uh, several others will be up there as well as part of Rock County Day at the Capitol. Um, it's a it's a large contingency from Rock County, not only from the city of Milton, but from the city of Janesville and Edgerton and Evansville and the private sector and the public sector and the school districts. We'll all be up there tomorrow to meet with our legislators, actually meet with our legislators, as well as the, the hope is to meet with every legislator. Uh, so there's a large contingency, about 90 people head up there. They've been doing this for about six or seven years. I've been a part of it for all of them that they've done up to up to this time. So it's always uh, an interesting day. It's, uh, it's, kind of, it's a fun day, uh, but it's an enlightening day and a little bit of a humbling day as well um, as you walk around the Capitol and, and uh, talk with the legislators about the things that affect us here in, in Rock County. Um, and then, uh, you know, the groups that we're locally part of, uh, you know, we'll try to get a good word in for Milton as well. Um, <clears throat> lastly, I want to thank Elena for her time for two and a half years here. When I started in September, Elena came shortly after in October, so we have both kind of uh, grown up together in the city of Milton, and uh, I appreciate her, her service to Milton and, and uh, how she's grown and, and developed in the position, and I think Sun Prairie is going to be very happy with the decision they made. It's uh, unfortunate for us. Uh, we'll have to look at how we're going to uh, replace her and, and what that's going to mean. And it may take some time, frankly, uh, because. Uh, but the nice thing is, is Elena has put the next clerk, whoever that person is, whoever she, he or she is, uh, for a position to be in a position of success. So I want to thank her for that and thank her for her for time with Milton and, and good luck in your future endeavors. Mm -hmm. Dan. I just want to thank the council for giving support on those resolutions. I think I've never testified before the state legislature before, but I think it'll make it a lot easier knowing that um, it's not just Dan, the Lone Ranger, who might apparently be running for governor, according to <laughs> <laughs> Al. Say, we've already had a Governor Nelson. Why not? <laughs> so thank you for that. Howie? Um, let's see. They, even though it rained, make a difference day did have some people at the Lions Club um, help paint part of the Lamar Park. The Boy Scouts helped pick up the bike trails. Fire departments cleaning up the other side of town on Merchant Row. Um, Cruzans are going to plant some flowers for us later. Um, and also then Blackhawk Credit is going to clean up part of this side of town in May. So um, besides the scrap drive has gone pretty well. We had two of the larger roll-offs full of scrap. So we don't have the weights on them yet, but it went well, a lot of people were happy with it. Um, there's, oh, and Lisa's not here, but the food trucks are there Sunday at the library for the May 7th, that's when they're having that. And then uh, Memorial Day, they're gonna have a silent parade up at um, Veterans Park at 8.30. So. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part because Al was bothering me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, the, yeah, food trucks. Is, like, uh, what's your favorite anyways. food truck? <laughs> um, the Memorial Day, they're going to have a silent march up at Veterans Park. And I think it's 8.30 is when it starts. Yeah, there will be a little um, ceremony, ceremony, and I'll be up there, and I think the Boy Scouts are going to be up there, too. And Yeah. Yep. Um, and just a reminder, our community recognition potluck picnic is Thursday, May 25th. Yep. What time is it? Uh, five o'clock we'll have the picnic start and then six o'clock will be the program so enough time to get everyone through the yeah. potluck live and <laughs> yeah. seated for the program at six and what are we serving um, the city is providing barbecue pulled pork sandwiches barbecue boneless wings uh, soda water and we'll have plates and cutlery available as well we are awesome <laughs> it is Thursday May 25th at 5 p.m. And everybody else just has to bring a dish to pass. Yep. Yep. Side dish or dessert. Side dish or dessert. And you know what, what's interesting about that event, not to um, extend the night, but um, this will be the fourth year in a row that we've done this type of event. Uh, this will be the second year that we've done the community recognition picnic. And in years past, you know, we, or last year was the first year time we went out to the community and asked for, for nominations for folks who have you know, done good things in the community that don't typically get recognized. And last year, I think we got six, seven nominations, something like that. Yeah, and so, the, so you know, I mean, they were great nominations, good people who did good things in the community, and if they got nominated, they got an award. This year, we got 23 nominations from all over the community, 
folks that you know we generally hear from, folks that we never hear from. We got uh, three nominations for City Employee of the Year who weren't even other city employees. So, I mean, citizens came and, and told us about uh, folks that they had done a good job. So it's a great, I, I think it's a great program and, and I, I'm very appreciative of the community for kind of getting behind it and, and uh, you know, participating in the, in the nomination process. It does make it difficult for us though, is, you know, uh, to give away 23 awards would be difficult. So we did have to winnow that down. We combined some, we, you know, talked about maybe shifting some to next year as projects get, get completed. But uh, very cool that we saw so many folks come out and say, hey, uh, and tell us stories that we've never heard before about citizens who have done great things in the community, you know, that, that we, we didn't know about. So that, you know, that was the idea, that was kind of the genesis behind this, I believe. And it's cool that it's continuing on and, and that it's growing and there's a, a greater interest in it all, all the time. So, you know, there's very few opportunities that a lot of folks will ever see this type of recognition um, and, and it's just, it's really cool to be a part of, of being able to offer that. Uh, like I said, I mean, some of the stories that we heard, I would have never known, you know, and uh, it's cool. And we're excited to be able to do this and not charge people and really have an event that um, promotes family, promotes community, and um, gives everyone an opportunity to, to really experience what a great place Milton is to live. Because I know we talk about it all the time and it's easy to say, hey, come to Milton, it's great, we love it here. But I mean, these are concrete examples that everybody can be so proud of and, and to make you feel good about your community and who your neighbors are and, and to build those relationships. So I'm really excited about that. Inga, did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that we're planning on sending the press release out to officially announce the award winners on Monday. So Yes. So Courier, just letting you know. Yeah, yeah. look for that. <laughs> All right, we almost Big did. Big reveal. The big yeah, reveal. Yeah. It is a big reveal. Yeah. 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 You should put that in the courier. Next courier is the big reveal. We Facebook Live that. Yes, we should Facebook Live that. <laughs> You're laughing, but wait till you find out who the city employee of the year is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you really going to want to see Facebook Live. <laughs> That's what we should do. We should do it in person. Tell everybody in person Facebook Live. Well, clear yeah. <laughs> Yeah, flowers and candy. <laughs> All right, you guys are having way too much fun today. All right, plenty to do that on your way out. <laughs> Last task. <laughs> All right, I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything for the good of the order? I just want to thank Elena for all the stuff that she did in the last two and a half years that she was here. It was, I was happy to work with you, and I'm sorry to see you go. But I know that this will be good for you, too. Best wishes. It took me three times to get on the council just so I could work with you. And all your, <laughs> I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or anything. I just, <laughs> but I'm happy for you. So. Okay. We're not above emotional blackmail Thanks here. Good <laughs> Thanks for being a good neighbor for last year. <laughs> Okay, I'll a motion to adjourn. Anybody? Second. Okay, motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.